Jimmy Wapo was one of the hottest rappers coming out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania before he was tragically murdered in 2018. With features from major artists like Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, and Ray Schremer, it seemed like Jimmy was in a good position to take over the rap game. But before the music, Wapo and his crew, the 1100 Gang, were running the streets of Pittsburgh and got involved in a violent beef that cost the rapper his life. Here's a closer look at the rise of Jimmy Wapo and the 1100 Gang, the Demons of Pittsburgh. Jimmy Wapo grew up in the Hill District of Pittsburgh in an area called The Lane. He grew up in the projects with his mother, two older brothers, a younger sister, and brother. Growing up, none of their fathers were around, and so Wapo started making moves in the streets from an early age. He admits that even though the area he grew up in was rough, he made a choice to be in the streets, and he accepted whatever came with that. But peer pressure and money made him and his friends start doing things they shouldn't have been doing. One of his early hustles was pretending to collect money on behalf of a boys and girls club outside of a Steelers game. They would print out a flyer off the computer and get a box of candy and finesse tourists and sports fans into buying it at a marked up rate by telling them it was a donation to the club. But that was when he was just a kid, and as he got older, his hustles got more dangerous. He dropped out of high school in the ninth grade after getting shot three times. In an interview with Say Cheese TV, the rapper explained that there was a big fight and someone started shooting into the crowd. Nah, it was just some, 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 some crazy shit. Big ass fight or some shit popped off and <laughs> just started shooting into the crowd or some Is shit. Is that like, that like what happened right there? No, no, that's a different occasion and shit. I got shot two different occasions and okay. shit. So the first time, how, how many times did you get shot? Three times each time. Getting shot at such a young age made him want to go even harder in the streets and get revenge for what happened to him. After that, he started selling drugs and robbing full time to support himself. But he was always into music, even as a kid. When he was only seven years old, his mother called a local radio station and let him rap over a beat. Plus, some of the older dudes in the hood used to pay him a few dollars to rap for him. Once he dropped out of high school, he started taking it more seriously because there wasn't anything else for him to do except trap. He recorded his first songs in a local church in the neighborhood that had a studio. He and his friends were allowed to record there for free, but they couldn't use any swears in their music. This made them have to get creative and write raps that were clean, but still hard. Then, they would press CDs at the house and start selling them around the neighborhood. In January 2015, he started uploading his music to SoundCloud to build a buzz in the city. He attracted the attention of Taylor Maglin, the owner of Pittsburgh-based blog, The Daily Loud, who offered to help Jimmy market his music. This helped him get millions of views on his music videos. His first song to do big numbers was Walkin' Bomb, which was a diss of another rapper from Pittsburgh named Stunna 2 Fly. Stunna 2 Fly dropped a diss track aimed at Jimmy Wapo called Fuck Your Gang 2. Wapo would respond with Walkin' Bomb, Stunna Diss, and the controversy helped him blow up. Although the track would be a major boost for his music career, it would also attract hate and jealousy from his ops, and Jimmy Wapo would be shot for the second time not long after dropping the track. It's not clear if the shooting was the result of his rap beef with Stunna or some past drama from his own hood, but Jimmy Wapo and Stunna would eventually put the beef behind him and collaborate together on the track Bout Bread in 2018. Again, the rapper was shot three times but survived, although he said that getting shot the second time made him actually start to rethink his lifestyle and decide to leave the streets alone. He had just had a daughter and his music was finally starting to take off, so he had a lot more to lose than the first time he was shot. The second time I had much more shit on the line, I had a daughter. I had the song Walkin' Bomb, that shit was kinda poppin', it was my first joint that really kinda started blowing out the water. Plus, this time around, he had more people around telling him to focus on music and stay away from the drama than when he was younger. He said that his mother always told him that if something wasn't working, he had to change. When he got caught selling drugs for the third or fourth time, his mom told him that he had to stop because he wasn't good at it, otherwise, he wouldn't get caught. Like, that, like my mom always taught me to be like that, like, when I got caught selling dope for the third, fourth time, she just told me, like, if you keep getting caught at it, then you're not good at it, you feel me? Like, if it's, if it's just something that you keep getting caught at, stop doing it. Do something different, you got to. You're not good at it, you keep getting caught, feel me? After he got shot the second time, he realized that he would have to relive the same experience over and over again unless he got out of the street for good, which made him decide to become a full-time rapper. After the success of Walking Bomb, he started getting booked for more shows and features. He was only getting about $200 a show or verse, but it was enough to make him start taking it more seriously now that he was generating some profits. But it wasn't enough money for him to stop hustling in the streets right away, and before he could fully make the transition to music, he would be arrested on drug charges. On February 7, 2016, the rapper and two of his associates were arrested during a traffic stop in Washington County, Pennsylvania. Police searched the car and found two stamped bags of heroin and a small amount of marijuana. He was arrested on drug charges and underage drinking and was sent to jail with a $25,000 bond. He later pled guilty to felony drug conspiracy charges and was sentenced to three years of probation. After being released, he dropped the track Elm Street in May 2016, which quickly racked up millions of views. 
He also caught the attention of World Star Hip Hop, who debuted five of his music videos that year. The track also got him recognized by Complex, who featured the rapper on a list called Bout to Blow, 10 dope new songs you should be hearing everywhere soon. In June 2016, he dropped his debut mixtape, Wapanese, which featured the track Backdoor that had a beat and guest verse from Atlanta super producer, Sunny Digital. Later that year, he would also be featured on the Riff Raff song, Stay Away From You, off the Houston Rappers Balloween mixtape. Then, in November, he dropped a collaborative mixtape with another Pittsburgh rapper named Hardo called Trap Knees, which featured guest appearances from Wiz Khalifa and 21 Savage. So, Jimmy Wapo was finally making it into the mainstream, but all the success would also come with problems. While he was blowing up, the rapper would be sent back to jail for violating his probation. Because he was still on probation, he was not allowed to leave the state of Pennsylvania, but he was already receiving offers from major record labels and decided to take a trip to New York City to discuss business. He didn't clear it with his probation officer and ended up missing an appointment while he was gone. Not long after missing the meeting, he was caught and sent back to jail for violating probation and failing to pay court fines. But while locked up, he would stay productive and wrote an entire mixtape, which he later released as Back Against the Wall in 2017. After he got out, he would continue to make moves in the music industry. But sadly, before he could break through on a mainstream level, he would be gunned down in his own neighborhood. Around 4.22 p.m. on the afternoon of June 18, 2018, Jimmy Wapo was the victim of a drive-by shooting that took his life. A rapper about to break through, killed in a drive-by shooting. Jimmy Wapo had quite a following and was known beyond the Pittsburgh rap scene. But his career all ended yesterday when he was shot multiple times in the Hill District. Friends flooded social media after the fatal shooting. He was driving through the Hill District neighborhood where he grew up with another male passenger when a gunman drove past, opened the window, and started letting off shots. The passenger survived the shooting, but Jimmy Wapo was later pronounced dead after being rushed to UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. He was only 21 years old and left behind three kids. The crazy thing is that just 26 minutes before Jimmy Wapo was killed, XXX Tentacion was also gunned down during a robbery in Deerfield Beach, Florida. 20-year-old XXX Tentation killed in an apparent robbery. Police say the artist, whose real name is Jose Onfroy, was leaving a Broward County motorcycle shop yesterday when he was shot by two men who ran up to his car. The two shootings are not connected, but overall, it was a tragic day for hip hop. But what's even crazier is that a few months after his death, news broke that police were filing RICO charges against the notorious 1100 gang from the Hill District neighborhood. The indictment accused the gang of causing a wave of terror across the city of Pittsburgh by conspiring to deal narcotics, plus rob and kill their enemies. It also named Jimmy Wapo as one of the main leaders of the gang. Federal court papers say the most prominent leader of the 1100 gang was Pittsburgh rapper Jimmy Wapo, whose real name was Travon Smart. The police were already investigating the rapper at the time of his death, but the case didn't come to light until August of 2018. Three alleged members of the 1100 gang were charged in the indictment. Deontay Griffin, Sidney Pack, and Richard Kelly. The case also revealed that many of the charges stemmed from an ongoing beef 1100 had with another local gang called the Wavy Boys. The paperwork alleges that Jimmy Wapo used his status as a famous rapper to call shots in the gang and was the one who ordered many of the crimes the gang is accused of. The documents say that other members of the gang would commit crimes on his behalf in exchange for payment or being featured in his music videos. Anyone who didn't meet expectations or disrespected the crew would face severe punishment. The paperwork also reveals that the beef between 1100 and the Wavy Boys goes all the way back to 2012. The gangs would frequently diss each other on social media, which only got worse after an 1100 member named Lumber was murdered by the Wavy Boys. After that, they would go back and forth dropping bodies until the head honcho himself was taken out in 2018. In April 2015, Sidney Pack and another 1100 member named TD allegedly murked a Wavy Boys affiliate named Christopher Richardson and injured two other people. Later that same year, WAPO allegedly instructed 1100 members to take out another Wavy Boys member identified as MBB. In October 2016, Pack and Deontay Griffin shot and killed a Wavy Boys member identified as JH and injured a 7 year old in the process. Just a month later, 1100 member identified as JP was shot twice in the head by Pack while WAPO was allegedly present. Police used social media, interviews, music videos, and all kinds of other internet content to string together their case and paint Jimmy Wapo as a violent gang leader who uses clout as a rapper to order hits on both his enemies and his own people. Although it's hard to tell whether this accusation is true or just another way for the police to build their case. Wapo was never actually accused of committing any crimes himself and he was not charged in the RICO case. But the court documents make him look like a mafia crime boss who uses money and power to eliminate his enemies and demand absolute loyalty from his crew. Wapo isn't here to defend himself, and none of his people are cooperating with authorities. 
so it's hard to know whether this is true or just another way to make a small neighborhood street gang look like a complex criminal organization. Griffin, Pack, and Kelly all pled guilty to the RICO charges, which included conspiracy to commit murder and distribution of drugs like fentanyl. Griffin was sentenced to 117 months, Pack was sentenced to 78, and Kelly has yet to be sentenced. Jimmy Wapo is another talented rapper taken too soon. Despite what he may or may not have been involved in, it seems like he was making an honest effort to change his life and focus on the music. But old street politics don't disappear overnight just because you start rapping, especially when so much blood has already been spilled. At least the rapper left behind some great music to carry on his legacy. 